Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Sunshine, and we are here at OC Sports and Wellness, the premier family and sports medicine clinic in South Orange County. So today's talk is going to be on specialty labs, and this is um, a big part of my practice. I practice more uh, along the lines of functional medicine. I also practice conventional medicine, and functional lab testing are usually outside of what's considered to be part of traditional testing that we normally get and we normally think about. And so I'm gonna talk about um, why we do the testing and what are some of the insights that we can glean from the results that we get in the testing. So I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get started. So specialty lab testing, what are they and how do we use them? So this first quote is, he who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. And this is a quote from Thomas Carlyle. So again, the big focus of my medical practice is really about trying to optimize a patient's health. And I try to do that with myself as well. And, um, and sometimes it's hard to get to the root cause of why somebody isn't feeling well. And a lot of the standardized testing doesn't give us hope to finding what's the underlying cause. This is a typical model in healthcare today. And this is a cartoon, maybe you can read it, but it's one line uh, where people are all lined up. It's toxic pills and surgery. And then the other line where there's nobody standing, the windows, person's alone is lifestyle changes. So it's all too familiar to me that most people that are part of my generation, the generation ahead of me, and the three generations below me, we all we think all we know in, in healthcare really is what pill do we need to feel better? Or what surgery do we need to correct the underlying problem? And what we're finding is that Lifestyle changes oftentimes are all we need to find a solution to why we don't feel the way we want to feel. So first of all, getting the right blood work. So traditional labs that we get are a complete blood count, or we call it the CBC. And this, this looks at red and white blood cells, platelets. Platelets are the things that uh, clot blood, red cells are the, th the, the cells that carry oxygen, and the white blood cells are the stuff that fights infection. We also get this comprehensive metabolic panel that looks at kidney and liver function. It looks at glucose, electrolytes, calcium, protein levels. All that is important and it's good to get. And it looks at lipid panel, looks at the good and bad, cholesterols, you know, the LDL and the HDL, looks at triglyceride levels. And then for men uh, over the age of 50, we recommend a PSA. And that's kind of a standard lab panel that we will get. Oftentimes, when you confront your doctor and ask for additional testing, their response will be, I really care about you, but I don't think that testing is necessary. So what are some of the pitfalls with traditional lab testing? Labs are centered around disease rather than dysfunction. By the time a disease shows up in the blood, it's often late in the disease process. So we're catching things late. And a normal blood test result does not mean that there's absence of disease and that you are functioning on all cylinders. And test results often do not explain why, piece, excuse me, why patients are experiencing long-standing symptoms such as pain, fatigue, anxiety, and poor focus, just to name a few. And this is what we see all the time as doctors and we're not able to get to the root cause most of the time. So what are some of the commonly omitted lab tests that I'll typically get? First one are hormone tests, such as cortisol. You get a comprehensive thyroid panel, as well as reproductive hormones in those patients where it's, it's pertinent. I look at inflammatory markers, such as fasting insulin, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, or CRP, Ferritin. I'll look at an iron panel, especially in vegans or vegetarians. I look at omega-3 levels. 
And then I also recommend checking LDL particle size and LDL particle number. Because oftentimes people have a normal lipid panel, but if they have a history of heart disease in their family, or they have other risk factors such as smoking, high blood pressure, or diabetes, I wanna look at that LDL particle size and particle number because that oftentimes can be abnormal in light of a normal lipid panel. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about chronic illness because that's really what these functional tests address is how do we dig deeper to find answers to people who can't get answers in the traditional system. This picture is the cover of Time Magazine in 2004 titled The Secret Killer. And this is talking about inflammation 16, 17 years ago. And again, it's still not recognized in traditional medicine as being really the underlying cause of most chronic illness. And some of the specialty labs that I'll talk about get down to that uh, core understanding of what's the cause of the inflammation. So we know that chronic illness is preceded by long-term cellular inflammation and functional disturbances. And it's this long-standing excessive inflammation that is at the core of chronic illness. And the main culprits are gonna be the standard American diet. And that's high in processed and highly refined foods and sugar smoking. Fortunately, smoking is on the decline in many cities. Environmental toxins, prescription medications. Again, the average Medicare patient is on 12 prescription medications in the United States. We represent 4.5% of the world population, and we consume more than 50% of prescription medications, um, cleaning products, and et cetera. There's a lot of toxins in our, in our environment. Um, that weren't around 40, 50 years ago. So understanding how toxins can affect us and to be able to look at a uh, toxic burden in our system. Also, chronic illness can be caused by low omega-3 levels, lack of exercise, poor sleep, um, and, um, and those are important. So again, lifestyle plays a huge role in ameliorating chronic illness. But like that first cartoon showed you, people want the quick fix. We want the pill, we want the surgeries to make us feel better. And that most of the time in my experience is the opposite direction that you wanna go. So in terms of treating this chronic illness, you know, we have inflammation, we have pain, we have anxiety, we're depressed, um, we're not sleeping. Um, it really requires a, a wide array of available in interventions. Medications is certainly one of them. If you have an infection, a bacterial infection, certainly antibiotics have, have uh, saved millions, millions of lives over the last 60 years. Um, but oftentimes medications are a short-term solution rather than a long-term cure. Uh, nutritional supplements are available. But how do we know which supplements to use? When uh, do we just treat blindly? Or do we treat everybody the same with the same supplements? I think that's a little short-sighted. And that's where some of the more functional lab testing can really pinpoint, do you have nutritional deficiencies? Do you have inflammation? Do you have um, other issues with digestion or um, autoantibodies? So these are things that the functional labs give us a better insight compared to the traditional labs. Again, other ways of treating chronic illness, lifestyle changes and detox programs. So lifestyle changes is a common solution. Again, making better food choices, beginning and maintaining a regular exercise program, obtaining proper amounts of sleep, implementing stress reduction habits like meditation, um, spending time with friends and family. We need community. And that's been hard. I think the hardest hit with this COVID pandemic 
that we're currently in. Again, lifestyle, I think if we can solve a lot of chronic health symptoms and chronic health conditions by just making lifestyle changes. Again, we are conditioned to first ask doctors for a pill or, hey, can you just, I have chronic arthritis in my knee, can you just fix it with an operation? And we know that doesn't help most of the time. So what is functional lab testing? And it's really taking a deeper dive in, in labs. It evaluates for causes of longstanding symptoms such as pain, fatigue, abdominal bloating. It evaluates for nutritional imbalances. It evaluates for biochemical imbalances as well as physiologic imbalances. And again, a lot of these tests really are focusing more effort on prevention, trying to catch things early. We know that autoimmunity is on the rise due to an increase in gut inflammation and an increase in gut barrier permeability. And sometimes looking and identifying somebody who has autoantibodies against a particular enzyme or protein, um, we can arrest that autoimmune condition before it becomes chronic and clinically significant. Um, and that's really important. I think, especially if you have a family history of autoimmunity, you should really consider getting autoantibody testing. I'm evaluating for food sensitivities and food reactivity. This is something that most people assume that, hey, I get bloating after I eat. That's pretty normal. I've had it for years. Why is it a problem? Well, that bloating or indigestion or reflux, that's a sign of inflammation. That's not normal. That's not healthy. In one study, 65% of people admitted to symptoms of intestinal distress, whether it's diarrhea, constipation, bloating, abdominal pain, reflux. And most people just assume it's normal, that everyone has it. It's just part of life. And it really isn't. That's a sign that your intestinal tract is not functioning normally. And most of the time it's due to inflammation. It's due to toxin burden, toxic, toxin burden. It could be due to poor digestion. Certainly as we get older, we don't make as many, as much pancreatic enzyme or maybe bile, um, especially if our liver is not functioning normally. Um, some of the testing can evaluate for underlying infection, like looking for pathogens in the stool. Um, toxins, there's home urine testing. Um, you can do hair samples to look for heavy metals. Um, and again, dysfunctional gut, such as gut barrier, dysfunction or breakdown. That is a big problem. Um, and now we have testing that's available to evaluate for what we call leaky gut, which could be, again, one of the main reasons we're dealing with a, a rise in chronic inflammation and chronic illness. And again, this quote by Benjamin Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. So I think that's really what we need to focus on. It's not weight until we become symptomatic and sick before we start to do a battery of tests. But if we're starting to have symptoms that maybe are mild or there's some dysfunctional um, issues, maybe you're getting afternoon headaches, or like I said, maybe you have gut issues, or maybe you have dry skin, um, thinning of your hair, we need to work that up. And sometimes traditional labs is all we need. If those don't give us the solution, or the answers we're looking for, again, taking a deeper dive for some of the functional medicine labs can be very helpful. So what, is, what are some common options for functional lab testing? Again, this is stuff that current medical students, and even when I was in medical school, for sure, we didn't learn this stuff because it's fairly new and it is controversial. Like, why do I have to, these lab tests, you know, who, who, who is behind this? And are these labs certified? Are they FDA approved? Is it giving me accurate information? And I'll have to tell you in doing my own investigation, these are legitimate labs that give us legitimate information that I think is superior to the standard labs we're gonna get from some of the routine labs that we go to to get routine blood work. 
So you can do home stool testing, again, looking for infection, digestion problems, and again, leaky gut. Home urine testing to evaluate for mold exposure, mold toxins, testing for heavy metals. Blood testing to evaluate for nutritional deficiencies, um, which include vitamin and mineral deficiencies, gluten reactivity, autoantibodies. Again, this is antibodies against our own cells, our own proteins, and this is on the rise. And traditional medicine is not paying a lot of attention to prevention in this area. Again, gut barrier permeability can be seen with blood testing as well and, and more. So there's quite an array of testing that's available. And then there's home salivary testing to evaluate for adrenal gland function. So the big question that always comes up is does my insurance cover these tests? In actuality, there are some labs that will try to work with insurance companies. But what's interesting is if you go through insurance, the cost is oftentimes two or three times more expensive than if you just pay cash. And some people are insistent on going through their insurance. Most people, I think it's 25 to 50% have a high deductible plan. So they get charged this outrageous fee that would have been a significantly, would have been significantly less if they just paid cash to begin with. But generally health insurance does not cover this type of testing. Um, however, patients can utilize their health savings account or flexible spending account to cover these costs because they're being ordered by a medical doctor. And it's true, this functional medicine testing or functional lab testing can be costly. Um, these tests can run anywhere from 150 to $450, depending on which test you're getting. And if you're getting multiple tests, which some people um, request, some patients request from the get-go, it's like, hey, let's just test what we need to test now, and then we can figure out what's going on. And some of the, really the kind of leaders in functional medicine oftentimes profess, let's check now. If you're having chronic symptoms, let's check for gut issues. Let's check for blood issues. Let's check for heavy metals. Let's look for infection. And that way we kind of know, rather than ordering one test at a time, getting the results back in a few weeks, and then going on to the next test. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I think it's important to really try to drill down um, with, with a patient and really make it a joint decision. Like, you know what? These symptoms sound like X, Y, or Z, let's order these tests that might give us some information and support that assumption. And, um, and then the last one is, you know, you can pay me now or pay me later. I think it's important if you are de dealing with chronic illness, chronic symptoms that you've had for months or years, you know, invest the money in lab testing if it's appropriate. Um, and if you're working with a doctor who has experience with some of these labs and the tests that are, that are offered. Uh, again, this picture here to the right, pay a little now instead of a lot later. Again, most people as they age are gonna spend most of their 401k on their health. And that's unfortunate. I think if to age gracefully I, and, to, and to keep that money and use it for vacations and, um, and hobbies, uh, that's what I plan to do. Again, we don't have a crystal ball. I can't look in the future, but I think we take care of ourselves. Now we're gonna spend less money on our health in the future. So this is a quote by Mark Hyman. He's one of the leaders in the functional medicine world. And he's written, I think 11 now, about New York Times bestsellers. This quote says, the way modern medicine operates is like going, is like trying to diagnose what's wrong with your car by listening to the noises it makes instead of looking under the hood. And another um, medical doctor, I can't recall his name, but he had a quote that says the medical education that the students are learning now has, has no longer serves us. And I think as medical students, we should be learning about functional lab testing. We should be learning more about lifestyle and how that can affect health outcomes. But instead we're learning more about pills and procedures. So I'm gonna go over a few cases 
um, just with my experience and how functional lab testing has helped my patients. First case is a 45 year old male with persistent stomach upset, intermittent diarrhea. It's been going on for months. Uh, he eats very specific. He's been a long time strict vet, a vegan, um, and uh, he can't figure out why he just doesn't feel well and why his gut's just, um, he's wrestling with these symptoms. Uh, we did some food sensitivity testing that showed very high IgG antibody response to pea protein. And as a, as a vegan, um, he eats a lot of pea protein. So again, sometimes it could be that IgG could be a tolerance, but it could also be a reactivity. So we're gonna get him off that. Um, and it also showed that he has leaky gut. Now, as we were waiting for the test to come back, we started a gut repair program with him using my um, antimicrobials and glutamine and other ingredients um, to help repair his gut. And he's feeling better even after just a week and a half of being on the supplements. Second case is a 60 year old competitive half marathon runner who has been experiencing muscle cramping and unusual fatigue during the end of his training runs. His basic blood work was all normal. His thyroid was normal. His reproductive hormones were normal. Um, he didn't have low iron. He, he, he ate healthy. He exercised regularly. He looked fit. His examination was normal. We did do um, micronutrient testing just to see if he had any vitamin or mineral deficiencies. And he had a few. And it wasn't alarming, but just a few. And we replaced those deficiencies and I got a text from him probably about four or six weeks later that he was, he took second place in his age group in his half marathon. So again, rather than guessing, we did a test and gave him answers and those seemed to be um, the solution was replacing his vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And the last case I'm gonna share with you is a 36 year old married female, mother of two young children, but she's working full time and also going to school to become a health coach. A home salary test was used to evaluate her daytime cortisol and DHEA level because she said, you know, I don't feel stressed, but she exuded stress. Um, and she um, said, well, how do I know, you know, what's going on? So we decided to do this test and it showed not only a high morning cortisol, and cortisol is usually high in the morning and then it usually decreases by about 50% every four to six hours throughout the day or about every four hours. And uh, hers was high in the morning and then stayed high throughout the day and into the evening. And so we really, I was, it, it was a test that really helped us support why she was feeling the way she was. She was anxious, poor focus, um, couldn't sleep well at night. Um, and so we got her on some adaptogenic herbs. We talked about some stress modification techniques. Um, she was already exercising quite regularly and um, kind of that approach really seemed to help improve her symptoms. And again, the testing I think was very helpful because it really convinced her that, hey, your cortisol levels are too high, you're too stressed. Where she thought she was able to manage everything. She thought she was really uber woman. And this was uh, a little bit of a wake up call. And it kind of reinforced my approach was, you know, you've got to think about maybe giving something up. Can you put school on hold um, because, or can you, you know, talk to your boss about working four days a week instead of five days a week, whatever, you know, be not, trying not to bite off more than you can chew, which most people in Orange County tend to do that. So in summary, our bodies, are these incredible machines that have the ability to heal from injury and infection. But the number of patients with chronic symptoms is all too common in our society. We need to do something about it. Modern medicine and basic lab testing is great for managing acute illness. But the current testing offered by traditional labs and doctors um, are inadequate in really providing the underlying causes of chronic illness and disease. I mean, it could be hormone imbalance, it could be autoimmunity, it could be gut permeability. And we need testing that's gonna be helpful to give us insight into what's going on, what's dysfunctional, where are the imb imbalances? And understand the usefulness of functional lab testing can help solve the underlying cause of these complex chronic diseases. 
And again, another quote by Ben Franklin, that if you plan, if you fail to plan, you were planning to fail. And I really think that is true with most people and how they look at their health. In, you know, in modern times, like we're living in today, we wait until we're sick before we go see a doctor. Um, or wait till we have symptoms that aren't going away with over-the-counter medications. And I think it's really important to develop healthy lifestyle habits so you can fend off chronic illness. And most of the time, healthy lifestyle changes is all you need. Pills and procedures most often will not give you the results. And if you're dealing with chronic illness and traditional labs aren't giving the answers, work with a functional medicine doctor who understands these tests to look and see what tests may be helpful to provide additional information. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate the, the, uh, the time to learn more about why we order functional medicine testing and, and what it can do to help us provide you with solutions in your path to optimal health.